Okay, so we are on the home stretch now of the clean of this carburetor. We're going to start by taking our, our carburetor bowl and the, the needle and sliding the needle so that it sits like so on the bowl. Then we're going to very carefully and precisely slide that down so that the needle goes into the seat so the carburetor sits a little bit less than level just like that and just gotta recover our uh, shiny little metal rod the all important shiny metal rod that I seem to misplace. There we, there we are. Very very important to know where all your parts are. Um, so then what we'll do is try to do this without my hand getting in the way is line up the carburetor so that the the holes on the body and the holes on the bowl line up. Gently slide this little metal rod in. Catch the first hole, catch the second hole, and there we go. So now the bowl is reattached and just check that our needle moves freely and as it should, which it does, which is good. And we'll just once again give that a little spritz of brake cleaner so that you uh, just make everything move nice. You never want to use anything like WD-40 because that's an oil-based uh, uh, chemical. Oops. Whoops. We have uh, put the the needle in rather rather poorly. So I'm just going to have to pull the float again. This is where patience is important because obviously, like I said, you want to do it once and do it right. And this falls under the category of doing it right. So we're just going to put that on once again. Make sure that it is where it should be. And okay, let's try this again. Now, the reason why that came out is because I was playing with it. And you need to remember that just because you can move it a certain amount with the bowl off. Doesn't mean that it's going to be able to move that amount with the bowl on. So one thing you don't want to do is put something together, make it work well, and then in the process of putting it together, play with it because that will make it not work well, usually. It just there we go. So, I'm not going to touch it this time so that nothing bad happens. Um, we will start by uh, taking the body of the carburetor and just propping it up against this brake cleaner can. And very slowly place this, the top of the carburetor and the bowl, back into the bottom careful that we don't damage anything. Okay, now very slowly put it in. Okay, so now we are ready to thread this first. Actually what we're going to want to do, I apologize, is gently remove this. I'm going to use a standard wiggle technique just to kind of, you know, you don't want to apply too much force to it because then you'll run the risk of damaging the float. And just work it out a little bit. The point, the reason why I'm doing this is because I need to put my idle mixture shoe. Okay. Note to self, idle mixture screw can be put in or removed, which is equally important um, when the 
carburetor is in one piece so just thread that in so that it'll hold itself in place um, no reason to give it its final setting yeah I'm just gonna move the camera down so you guys can get a better look at what's going on Okay, move forward. There we go. Okay, so now we want to take our four flat head screws and just run them in here so that they're once again just holding themselves in place and not going anywhere. So, third one. And the fourth one. And now we just take our screwdriver and work them back in. You don't want to put too much tension on them, just because there's really no no reason to. Um, they have lock washers on them, uh, the kind that it's a total washer with one kind of diagonal cut in them, which will lock in place. I'm going to do too much at once. Just got to take my time and put everything together the right way. As you're watching this, I, uh, you'll hear me kind of mumble to myself or say things that may not be within the context of a 1971 Briggs and Stratton updraft carburetor rebuild, but, you know, it's quite simply, this is just a walking narrative of um, you know steps to take things to notice when you're cleaning a carburetor such as this one um, so just uh, just so you are informed and aware and we're gonna get them so that they're pretty tight um, obviously not set to their final tension yet uh, but still fairly even you want to screw these in evenly so that there isn't, you know, one that has a final tension on it and the others don't because you run the risk of stripping a thread or damaging the bowl somehow and as stated you really can't can't afford to do that. So now this is where we give them their final final tension. Just kinda get everything so it feels feels tight like you're not you're not forcing it but it's not gonna go anywhere. And there one there, one there. It's important to get a tight seal so that the uh, the gasket can set up and do its job. Um, but again, you don't want to overdo anything because then you run the risk of, um, you know, damaging something. So um, one thing that I noticed is that the top of my uh, top of the carburetor, where it attaches to the intake manifold, is um, Dirty, so we'll give it a little, give it a little spritz with brake cleaner, and uh, just clean the top of it off so that none of those little dirt particles can get get sucked in and mess with my hard work. So that's it's ready to go, kind of. Um, the next thing we need to do is screw back in our. Uh, main jet by way of this brass brass nut at the end here. Uh, so just take my take my larger screwdriver. And just, like uh, like I said, these last last few and first few uh, rotations are fairly difficult, but then after that, once it gets easier, you can switch over to a smaller screwdriver such as this one. Um, about a three-eighths inch head, and just uh, work that back in. You know, it's kind of a kind of an awkward angle, but it's one where you just kind of kind of slow yourself down, and you know, if it means going slow to do the right job, then that's what you got to do. Just, just keep, keep working that. 
I said, it's a very, very awkward angle, and this doesn't exactly help that I'm, I'm left-handed. I want to give you guys a good angle so you can see what's going on, but I kind of want to turn everything towards myself so that I can see what's going on from my perspective. Now, you really don't want to over-tighten this because it seems to be a pretty soft metal, but when you look inside, you'll see, uh, or I hope you can see, a uh, shaft down there, and that is actually the, the jet. And uh, when it's in its final position, it will be resting up against the, uh, the throat of the carburetor. Just got to give it a few more, few more rotations. It will be ready to go. And you'll kind of, you'll know when it, when you've reached the end because it won't go any farther without feeling like you really need to force it. So I think, I think a few more and then I'll be there. But it's very, very, very important to take your time, not rush things. Do it once, do it right. And, uh, and that will get you the best result. Okay, so I have just completed uh, tightening my my main jet, and um, now what I'm going to do is take my main mixture screw and give it give it a little covering of uh, brake cleaner just to get any dirt particles that were off of it, and I will also uh, spray a little bit into the main jet screw hole that out. And now we can proceed to thread our screw back. You gotta cut oh, I'm missing something. That's right, I forgot. First we have to take our uh seven sixteenths uh nut headed piece and thread that back in very gently so that we don't cross up the cross up the threads. Want to make sure that the little gasket that's on there is in good shape. You don't want to be leaking gas. Just there we go, found found the thread kind of a difficult little bugger to get on, but take your 716 wrench. I'm using a crescent wrench, I'm not a crescent wrench, a uh, open headed wrench is what I call them, I don't know what the real term would be, and uh, work that in. Again, something that you really don't want to over tighten, just kind of get it to the point where it feels right and then, you know, leave it at that. Now we